Hello, scrappers. Today, we're going to work with some military grade gold pins. I've had these sitting around for a while and decided it's time to do something with them. Going to try and get the gold out of them. We'll figure out how much gold's in them. First, let's figure out how much they weigh as they are. Now, even though these are military grade and they've got some good thick gold uh, plating on them, I'm not expecting to get a huge amount of gold out of them. But we'll see how much we've got here all together. 830 grams. Is that showing up? So 830 grams, or for those of us in the uh, imperial measurements world, one pound, 13.2 ounces. Okay, so we'll see just how much gold we get out of uh, these pins. Now, there's a couple different ways we can process these pins. And um, your first thought might be to just uh, put some nitric acid on them and dissolve away the base metal and leave the gold foils behind. And yeah, that'll work. It'll be pretty quick, too. And it'll be exciting. There'll be lots of fizzing. There'll be brown-orange fumes coming off furiously. And you'll have all that base metal dissolved probably in a couple hours at the most. Potential problem with that idea, though. What if these are bronze? What if these pins are bronzed? What if this is tin here on the areas that are not gold plated? What if these pins have been tinned? I mean, they're all, they're all non-magnetic. I've already checked them. They're all non-magnetic, so they're not steel. They could be bronze, and these uh, bare areas here could be tin. Well, bronze has tin in it. If these are tin, that means there's tin here. You don't want to mix tin and nitric acid. That is a big mistake. You'll wind up with metastatic acid, which is an insoluble clay-like mud that will entomb a lot of this gold and you'll never get it out of that mud. I've made that mistake before. Um, I suppose I could do like a small batch test just to see what they're made of, but um, I think I'm not going to even bother. I think I'm just going to put nitric acid away and just work with uh, the old reliable uh, AP solution. Um, muriatic acid and hydrogen peroxide. It's going to take a lot longer. It's not going to be nearly as exciting, but I'll tell you what. It will eventually dissolve away all the base metals and leave the gold foils, um, and it won't leave behind anything, it won't leave behind any insoluble metastatic acid, which is just a really big pain in the rear to deal with. You don't want to have to deal with it. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, go with the old reliable AP solution. So I'm just going to dump these in a beaker and make some AP solution. And, you know, it's going to take a while few days, week, maybe even a little longer, but that's okay. I have learned that patience is a virtue. Well, these come in a lot of different types. Patience is a virtue when you're uh, trying to recover gold from scrap. Trying to rush it a lot of times just causes problems. Looks like there's some plastic things here too, which I probably don't want to include in this. I'll pull out these plastic pieces. I don't know what they are. Yeah, I got these. Uh, I got these pins in a batch of electronic equipment I bought at a surplus auction a while back, and they've just been sitting around doing nothing. So I thought, well, today's a good day to get the gold out of them. I really haven't even had a close-up look at them. I didn't notice these plastic things in here. Whatever they are. Spacers or, I don't know, dies for helping uh, attach wires to the pins. I'm not sure. But we'll just leave them out. It probably wouldn't hurt anything to leave them in there, but I'll pull them out. Mm. 
The wind's going to blow this garbage all over the place. I'll have to pick it up. And I missed a couple. Well, it probably won't hurt anything if I missed a couple more in there. All right. So. Let me glove up, and we'll make some AP solution. So, like I said before, AP solution is just like 50% uh, uh, muriatic acid and 50% hydrogen peroxide. So, let's see. And there's a fair amount of metal in there, so I'm going to... I'm going to put in about 600 milliliters of acid, at least to start with. And about that much hydrogen peroxide. Ooh, train going by. Give it a little bit of a stir. Look at that, it's turning green already. I think it's already attacking the, uh, already attacking the metal in there. There's certainly some copper there based on the green color we're getting. But, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some tin in there too. Wow, look how vigorous that reaction's getting. I mean, this is all, it's actually fairly cool out here. It's in the morning. Um, a lot of times, uh, if you're using AP solution and you don't get an immediate reaction, if you've got some spent AP solution laying around, you can put a little of that in there because the metal salts in the spent AP solution are very corrosive and they'll kind of jump start the reaction. This reaction doesn't need any jump starting. I was thinking this might take a week or more. Ah, by the looks of it, it may not take that long at all. So, just going to let this go. Uh, I'll stir it from time to time. Uh, one thing you can do to kind of speed up the reaction if you if you got a slow reaction, which I don't have a slow reaction here, but you can put it like the, a, a hose from a, a fish tank bubbler in there and just uh, let it bubble away and that will keep the uh, liquid stirred up so it doesn't uh, stagnate and it will also oxygenate the liquid which will help with the uh, corroding away the base metals. But, and I got my fish tank bubbler out and ready to go, but it looks like I'm not going to need it. This is just bubbling away like crazy. It's, the reaction is almost as vigorous as if I had used nitric acid. So, okay. In fact, from, from how vigorous this reaction is, I suspect these pins probably are bronze. I think there's a lot of tin in there. So I think this was probably the, the, the best choice for dealing with these with these pins. Because tin reacts really strongly with uh, with hydrochloric acid. Um, if those pins were just copper, I don't think we'd be getting a reaction quite this strong and vigorous. So I think those were probably uh, bronze, probably tinned. And I think we've made the right decision by going with AP solution. Wow, that is a vigorous reaction. All right. So. And look at that. The, the solution's already almost turned black. That's amazing. It's only been a couple minutes. So we'll see how long this takes. Until we got nothing but gold foils left in there. Well, it's just been a couple of minutes, just just long enough for me to kind of clean up the workbench a little bit here, throw out the trash, left over from the bags and stuff. And uh, I'll tell you what, this went from cool early morning room temperature, probably in the 60s, up to almost too hot to touch in just a couple of minutes. Wow, we got we got one heck of a reaction going on in there. And that liquid is almost opaque black. It's so green. And got some stuff floating. Let's try to stay out of the fumes here. Doesn't... Well, yeah, it looks like there's some gold foils floating in there already. There's some other stuff that looks like bits of plastic of some kind. But yeah, I see some gold foils floating already. So this is... I was thinking this was going to take a few days to a week. But I, I don't know. This might be done much quicker than I thought. We'll see. Of course, it's early days yet. Um, the reactants are fresh. The reaction's vigorous. I expect it'll slow down over time. 
We'll see. Well, it's almost exactly 24 hours later. That initial amazing burst of activity died out after a few hours. And really, the pins don't seem to be very digested at all. I think I still see little bits of gold floating around in there. So some of the foils did come off of a few of them, but most of them look like they're completely untouched. I was thinking this was probably going to take a little while. Probably, you know, a few days to a week at the very least. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more um, muriatic acid and uh, hydrogen peroxide to this. Maybe get it up to about the 1600 milliliter level. Just so um, these actually get, just so I get some more action going. Uh, because I'm going to be leaving on vacation in like a couple of weeks. Almost exactly two weeks from today. And I would like this to be done. If not, well, it can just sit here until I get back from vacation, I suppose. But, uh, so I'll put a little more in and, uh, keep the reaction going. I probably should have put the fish tank bubbler in like I was talking about. I don't know if it's too late. Maybe I can. Yeah, that got it bubbling away again. Um, adding the hydrogen peroxide is actually what started the bubbling again. And after adding the muriatic acid, not much happened. But adding the hydrogen peroxide, it got bubbling again. So uh, I'm going to stash this back in the back of my fume hood out of the way and just let it go and uh, check on it every few days, maybe give it a stir. If it looks like there's really not much happening, I may put the fish tank bubbler in. I'll have to figure out some way to... Oh, look at it go as I stir it. Wow. Exposing fresh material to the uh, fresh reactants. But uh, I'll have to figure out some way to wait it to hold it down at the bottom since uh, it, I didn't put it in before I put the pins in. So uh, they're not going to wait it down. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to let it sit for a while, see what happens. Well, hello. It's been, I don't know, a few days, maybe half a week. And um, the pins really don't seem that dissolved. But when I stir them, they do seem a little less, um, how should I describe it, solid. There's a little sponginess in there when I stir them. And there's a whole lot of uh, little bits of gold that float around in the liquid when I stir it. I'm sure it won't, float on the, it won't show up on the camera. But obviously the pins are dissolving slowly. The gold is coming off. Problem is, okay, I was just going to leave this until the pins were dissolved. But there's been a change in plans. I've got to break down my whole setup here and put it away because um, we're getting a big double wide uh, carport moved from another area of the property over to here in a few days. So I've got to get everything out of the way. I've got to break down my fume hood over here and get, get everything out of it and break it down. I've got to get rid of my lab bench over here. I've got to get rid of all my projects that are scattered around here. Everything has to be moved. I need to take down the easy up over my head and store it away just to make room to bring the carport over here. And then once the carport's installed, well, then it's going to be time for me to go on vacation. And I'm going to be out of town for like a month. So, uh, changing plans. This is just going to have to be stored for a while. Of course, it won't matter too much to you, but you'll, this will explain why it's in a different container. When I film the end of the video, now, they don't really look like they're all that dissolved, but uh, they're definitely a little less sturdy than they were before. Tell you what, that is some that is some good gold plating on there. I think that's probably one reason why they're taking so long to dissolve. That gold plating is is like 100%, so it's getting it's hard for the uh, the acid to get through to the base metal. It's getting there though. I can tell. It's getting there though. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this stuff sit in here. Yeah, there's, there's lots of little flakes of gold in this beaker. i got to wash them all in here. I don't want to lose any. Just going to let this sit in here. 
until we get the carport issue straightened out. I get back from my vacation. I can rebuild my lab, this time under a nice carport instead of under just under an easy up. And then we'll deal with it. I was going to go to Lowe's and buy a, another white bucket lid, because I got a bucket but no lid. But uh, I saw this in the recycling and figured out yeah, that's big enough. So, all right. And we're going to set this aside. And the next you see me will be about a month, month and a half. And things will be completely different. And hopefully, all the stuff in there will be dissolved. And there will be nothing but gold left. Alright, till then. Bye. Okay, it's been a couple of months. My lab has been completely torn down and rebuilt in a slightly different location. This is a temporary location for it because we're not done moving stuff around yet. I've been away, out of town for a couple months on a road trip. Came back. Looked in my little container here with the pins in it. And, surprise, surprise, I don't know if that's showing up, surprise, surprise, the pins have not been digested. They're still in here. So, what am I going to do? Well, first off, I did what I should have done in the beginning. Was I grabbed a couple out of here, I cut them in half, and I looked closely at what was in there, and it looks like they're just made of copper. I was afraid that they were made of bronze, and that would have made a horrible mess if they were made of bronze, um, because we would have created metastatic acid. Now, some of them were tinned, and I can see the, you know, the black area here where they were tinned, but the tin is long gone now after this couple month long soak in muriatic acid and um, hydrogen peroxide. And there is some, there is some, you know, some flakes of gold there. Some gold has come off the pins. So what I'm going to do is I will filter this liquid to capture that gold. But obviously I need to take a different tack on these because uh, the AP solution isn't going to dissolve pure copper that thick in you know any reasonable amount of time. So what I did was, I did this off camera. I took a couple of pins and I put them in some dilute nitric acid and the, the copper inside dissolved away nicely without any drama left behind a nice pretty clear blue solution and some heavy gold foils floating around in there. So it looks like we don't have a metastatic acid issue. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse these a few times with distilled water to get the chloride out of them. And then I'm going to put them in a beaker and I'm going to hit them with some dilute nitric acid and see if I can get them to dissolve finally so we can get all those lovely thick gold foils off of them. Because these are really thick gold foils. This Military grade pins are they're lovely. They've got really thick gold foils there. So, okay, in spite of my civilian snafu, I think we're back on track to get the gold out of these military grade pins. So, uh, fortunately, I have some more distilled water somewhere. I'll dig it up and we'll get these pins rinsed. Capture the rinse water over here, because yeah, there is a fair amount of gold floating around in that water. I doubt it even showing up on the camera, but it's there. The lighting in my temporary place here is not the best. But once we're done moving things around, I'll rebuild the lab in an area with better lighting. Okay, let me do a couple more rinses, then I'll get them in a beaker, and we'll start hitting them with some nitric acid. Okay, I got... Uh the pins in a beaker here in the fume hood. They've been rinsed quite a few times with distilled water. So hopefully all the chloride's gone. Well, I'm not too worried about making a weak aqua regia at this point because there's a lot of copper in there. And all that copper is going to have to dissolve first before any of the gold will dissolve. Because uh, copper's a lot more reactive. I've got this liquid here which uh, contains my test um, it's still got some active nitric in it and it's got all these gold uh, um, 
gold foils in here that I need to get back over here. So let me put some distilled water on that. Just enough to sort of cover the pins up. Give the copper salts we're going to create somewhere to go. Let's see here. A little bit of nitric acid left in this bottle. Put it in. Oh yeah, we're all ready. Look at that reaction we're getting. All ready. It's fizzing. I think I will just let that react. And I'm going to turn the heat up just to warm it up a little bit, speed things up. And then as necessary, add some more nitric. All right, time to get the fume hood going. Yeah, the blower's getting noisy again. I think I said in my last video on the fume hood that the blower's a consumable item. I've already ordered a new one. I can tell it's on its way out. But I'll work this one until it stops completely. So we're just going to let this cook. And uh, I'll add more nitric as necessary until all of the copper is dissolved and all we've got left in there is gold foils. In the meantime, I will get set up to filter that liquid because there is quite a layer of gold at the bottom of it. So I want to capture that on a filter so that I can add it back to this stuff so we get an accurate count of uh, just how much, uh, how much gold we got out of these pits. That is a very vigorous reaction. Cool. Alright, so I'll be back. Righty. While that's going on in a few moments, I'm going to filter this stuff and capture the gold in there. Set up for vacuum filtration just because I can, and that's going to make things a lot quicker. Get this two liters plus through here really quickly. And I'm not too worried if I spill a little bit of the liquid, which I seem to be doing because I'm sloppy. Because all the whoops, all the gold is down here in the bottom. I just want to. I probably could have siphoned that off or even poured it off into another container. Lack of forethought. Yeah, I'm making a heck of a mess. And this stuff's a little bit acidic, too. Okay, now we're pouring a little easier. Okay. I will pour this all through, and I'll give you a look at the filter when I'm done, when all of this gold, which is now down in this corner of the beaker, is in the bottom of the filter. Okay, the filtration went reasonably well, in spite of my uh, initial sloppiness due to the overfilled beaker. I did have to stop and empty the, some of the liquid out of the flask down here at one point because it was just full almost all the way to the top. But uh, let me show you this. a fair amount of gold in that filter. Again, the lighting is not great. Let me see if I can improve it here a bit. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So there's a fair amount of uh, gold in there. There's a lot of other stuff. Um, looks like bits of paint. Maybe black and red. I remember some of the, the pins had black and red bands on them. Probably polarity, I would imagine. But uh, Aside from the paint flex, there's a lot of gold in there. So this I will keep set aside, and when I'm ready to process the gold coming off of the pins in there, um, I will add this to it, just so we get an accurate weight. The reaction in here is starting to die down, so it's about time to add some more nitric acid to it. with a little bit more nitric acid. Just keep the uh, good times rolling here. Open up a fresh bottle. And we'll see what that does. Oh, that's reinvigorated the reaction. Okay. Just let that cook. So the reaction has slowed down a lot. Let's have a have a stir in here and see what these pins feel like. Uh, they still 
all feel pretty solid. So I guess it's going to take a lot more nitric than what I've put in so far. Wow, the blue jays are going nuts. That's usually a sign that there's a hawk or an eagle around. I'll have to go out under the under the cover here and look around and see. We get a lot of hawks and occasionally eagles. Let's put some more of this in and let it go. And just keep doing this until all of the copper's dissolved and we just got uh, nothing but foils floating around. There's already some foils floating in there. is finally all dissolved. Um, it's actually been a few days since I filmed the last segment. 
I got busy with some stuff. I got, I got injured, had to go to the clinic. That's a long story. Um, been working on hurricane prep because we got a hurricane coming in a few days. Uh, tomorrow's the 4th of July. We're having a big, um, big party here at the farm tomorrow, having a lot of family over. And then a couple days after that, the, the hurricane's coming, although it's probably just going to be a tropical storm by the time it gets here. So I've been working on hurricane prep. Haven't had a chance to do anything with this, but it's raining at the moment, so I'm taking a break from the hurricane prep. So what I'm going to do is, I need to filter this. There's, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but there's a lot of gold foil still floating in there. They haven't sunk to the bottom. I've even stirred it up some, and they, they aren't sinking. They're floating. They must have gas bubbles trapped inside them. So I'm going to have to filter this whole volume of liquid to make sure I don't uh, lose any of the gold. So I'm going to have to set up for filtration and filter all this liquid down and then we'll see what's left in the bottom. There's some weird stuff in the bottom. I don't know exactly what it is. It's metal that's not dissolving. So uh, this stuff's been through over two months in AP solution and it's been through, well, it's been over a week now here in nitric acid. There's very few metals that won't dissolve in both hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. I'm hoping that what's down here is one particular metal, but it's probably another one. We'll see. I'll talk about that later. Um, but I gotta get set up filter while it's still raining. Because once it stops raining, I gotta get back to work. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do vacuum filtration. And we shall see just what is in the bottom of this beaker. Oh, there's a lot of gold foils here. That's a beautiful thing. Now there is also some uh, stuff at the bottom of the beaker, which I suspect is a little bit of uh, metastatic acid, the infamous blue goo, gray goo. So there must have been some tin in those pins somewhere, but there's not much. And it's all at the bottom right now, so I'm going to try and get the clear liquid through first so the filter doesn't get clogged up with the goo down here that's going to go in last. So just, just so I can get this stuff filtered a little quicker. Anyway, once it's all in the filter, I'll give you a look at what's left in here. There's a lot of gold, like I said. Some of it's stuck to the sides here. And uh, there's a lot of something else down there. But... Let me get it filtered and I'll show you the remains. Well, we got kind of an interesting development here. I've got uh, the liquid, almost all of it here in the Buckner funnel, filtering. But when I got to the bottom of the beaker, I noticed that we have a huge mass of blue crystals in there. I suspect that is copper nitrate. This is a really concentrated solution of copper nitrate. A lot of nitric acid went in here to dissolve these tins. So there's a lot of pins, a lot of foils, you know, entrained in the crystals. And down there you can see some of the blue goo down there. And also you can see some of the undissolved stuff. Little metal barrels that did not dissolve. So, I'll give you my theory on what these might be. Feel free to shoot me down in the comments, but we'll probably know by the end of this video whether I'm right or not. I'm thinking there's only two common metals that will survive the treatment that uh, these pins have received. One is stainless steel and one is platinum. I mean, they could be something exotic, like iridium, rhodium, something like that. But I don't see why those would be used, even in military grade pins. I suspect they are stainless steel. But I'm hoping I'm wrong and they're platinum. Because that would be a nice bonus. Because I use a lot of nitric acid to dissolve these pins. And yeah, there's a lot of gold foils here. And it's thick gold foils too. This is the thickest gold foils I have ever seen on pins. So there's probably a fair amount of gold here. But boy, platinum would be a nice bonus. But I'm generally not that lucky. I'll bet they are stainless steel. We'll see. What I will probably do is... Once I get all this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the distilled water in here, put it on the heat, and dissolve those crystals so I can pour everything that's left in this beaker into the Buckner funnel and get it filtered. Um, 
So once that's done, once everything's in the filter and drained, we can get a closer look at these barrels and I can pull out one or two and maybe try dissolving them in aquaregia and give it the good old Stannis chloride test and see what it shows. Um, fingers crossed for platinum, but really just expecting nothing. So let me get these crystals dissolved and get everything in the filter. Got my hurricane prep done between rainstorms so I can get back to this. Put this on the heat with some distilled water in it. I think all the crystals in it are dissolved. Still a little warm. I let it cool down some. Uh, most of the sediment has settled back to the bottom because I stirred it up to make sure the crystals were dissolved. So there is a fair amount of sediment there. I want to try and pour this liquid off and leave the sediment behind till last because the filter is getting a little plugged up and uh, I don't want this to take all afternoon to filter. Let's see, I guess it's not too hot. I have made the mistake of pouring boiling hot liquid through a cold buckter funnel before and had it crack. So you don't do that twice. Things are kind of expensive and sometimes hard to get. So let me get the pump going. I suppose if it was a plastic buckner funnel, it wouldn't be a problem. But this is this is porcelain, and here I am not wearing my gloves. Got in a hurry, and I forgot to put the gloves on. Let's see if I can just do this without slopping any of it on my fingers. Although there shouldn't be much acid left in this. The first batch of liquid I poured off was sure it was fairly acidic still. Still had some uh, active nitric acid in it, but this is probably fairly diluted. Wow. I'll give you a close up look at that. Let me get the camera off the tripod and show you that. Well, I, I can't get the camera too close or it fogs up the lens. I just found that out because there's some steam coming out of there. But that is a lot of gold fair amount of gold there and you can start to see some of those other barrels in there which I assume are probably going to be stainless steel but I'm secretly hoping are platinum so interesting obviously I'm going to have to pick all of those barrels out of it before I treat this stuff with uh, aqua regia I mean it's probably going to be a fairly dirty gold drop first time around anyway so I don't need that adding to it Okay, just as an aside while this stuff's filtering through, this is the liquid that came out of this flask the first time around. Um, it, it got full, so I had to empty it. Well, I always check when I dissolve metals in nitric acid, I always check the resulting liquid to see if there's any silver in it. Because a lot of times there is silver in it. When I'm processing IC chips, they seem to have a lot of silver in them a lot of times. So I put a few milliliters of that in some tap water, stirred it up, nothing. Tap water has chlorine in it. If there was silver in that liquid, there would be a cloud of silver chloride in here. And there's nothing. It's just crystal clear, just a little blue, that's it. So, no detectable silver. But always check your waste liquids when you dissolve metals in nitric acid, because sometimes there is silver there. It's really easy to recover. I just recover it by cementing it out on copper. It costs me nothing, basically. It's a nice bonus. I'll put a link in the upper right corner to one of my videos where I'm cementing silver out on copper. Check it out. Well, here we are. All the mess is in the filter. And it is a mess, too, let me tell you. These little barrels, they just have gold foil stuck on them. They have gold foil packed inside them. I don't know how the heck I will separate the gold from these barrels. I've been sitting here, I've been washing them individually with a spray bottle trying to to spray the gold out from inside and off the outside and it doesn't work very well. It really doesn't. Um, I am half inclined to uh, just dissolve this whole mess in aqua regia and then deal with the, the results. I don't know. I don't know. I probably need more information. Um, these barrels, they're not as dense as I was thinking they were at first. I mean, because, you know, they sunk to the bottom pretty good. But, uh, 
they're not all that dense so it leads to me to believe that maybe they are probably stainless steel um, in fact they're not really that dense at all I, I know they can't be aluminum or they wouldn't have survived the hydrochloric acid titanium maybe I don't know I, I don't know why they would use titanium but who knows with military grade stuff but uh, I got a few of them here and uh, in this little beaker wash the gold off of them as best I could and out of them and I'm going to dissolve these in aqua regia and just see what I get. Just on the off chance they are platinum or some other exotic metal. But I'll bet they're just stainless steel. So let me uh, find my hydrochloric acid and nitric acid and we'll get some aqua regia going. Okay, I got the little beaker in the fume hood. Get a little bit of uh, muriatic acid in it. That should be way more than enough. Okay. Door closed, fume hood on. And we'll get a little nitric acid on it. And we'll see what happens. be more than enough nitric acid to show us something. Turn the heat on, just warm it up so the acid starts working and we'll see what becomes of those barrels in there. I got four of them in there. We'll see if they dissolve or if they're impervious to aqua regia too. That would be really interesting. Okay, gonna let that cook. Well, that's showing up on the video, but those barrels, well, first off, they're all standing upright, which is kind of interesting, and they're starting to fizz. Lots of bubbles coming off of them, and uh, the aqua regia is turning uh, dark yellow. So something's happening. I suppose I need to uh, mix up some status chloride solution so I can test that after they dissolve and see exactly what we got there. It's been a few more minutes. The aqua region is turning sort of a dark green brown color. I'm really suspecting those parts are stainless steel now. I'm thinking that's what you would get if you dissolved iron in aqua regia. So I'll let it go and I'll go ahead and test it with Stanish chloride just to be sure. But I'm thinking we are dealing with stainless steel here. Aquaregia. Here it looks more yellow. In bulk it kind of has a bit of a greenish tinge to it, it seems like. And here goes the Stannis Chloride. Now that is interesting. That looks like positive for gold to me. It's possible I didn't I thought those four barrels I dissolved, I thought I cleaned all of the uh, gold out of them, but it's possible I didn't. There may have been a little gold stuck inside one or, one or two of them. So I think that's a positive for gold. So uh, 
What I think I'm going to do with this stuff, this stuff over here, and I hope it's not a huge mistake, but what I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to dissolve all of this in aqua regia and uh, attempt to uh, drop the gold out of it. It'll be a dirty gold drop at least the first time, but I always refine my gold several times. In fact, I've got a video, I'll put a link up here in the uh, upper right uh, of me refining my gold, which I do several times just to make sure it's good pure gold. I use different precipitants just to make sure I isolate just the gold and leave other stuff behind. So I think just to make my life somewhat easier, I'm just gonna, cause this is, I, there is no free lunch, obviously. I mean, you know, okay, these pins were essentially free, but getting the gold here is so intimately mixed with these barrels is going to be difficult. And we got some metastatic acid in here, too, and other kinds of debris, so the first gold drop's going to be dirty. That's all there is to it. So um, I'm going to get this whole mess out of this funnel into a beaker. We'll make some aqua regia. We'll dissolve it. Drop the gold, see what we get. That's my plan. Oh, that blower motor sounded worse and worse. It's gonna fail soon, I'm gonna have to replace it. But I, fortunately, I do have a spare that arrived yesterday. So when it does die, I can slap the new one on real quick and we'll be uh, up and running again. So I got the contents of the Buckner funnel in this two liter beaker over here. Um, here's the filter left from when I filtered out the stuff when it was in the uh, AP solution and I filtered the AP solution so this has got a lot of gold foils in it and other debris that can go in there with that. Um, here's the little bit of aqua regia I made to dissolve those four barrels. I'll dump this in here. some more muriatic acid. Uh, what is that? 600 milliliters. We'll go a little more. Maybe 700. Because there's, there's a fair amount of stuff in there. Debris, um, metastatic acid, filter papers. Don't want it to get too thick. So we'll put a little bit of extra liquid in there. And I need a clean pipette for some nitric acid. So let me cover this up. Okay. I'll stick some nitric acid in there and get this reaction on the road. so far with these pins. 
anything is possible. So, well, the reaction seems to be slowing down. I still see gold foils floating around in there, so obviously it needs another dose of nitric acid at this point. So I will give it a few more squirts of nitric and see if we can get the reaction revived and get the rest of that metal dissolved. Oh wow, yeah. Look at look what happens when I put some nitric acid in there. solution in here. It took a fairly long time. I think that those, uh, I assume steel barrels uh, used up all the uh, nitric acid as they went into solution and I had to put more in to get the gold to start to go into solution. 
Um, I was very conservative though with the nitric acid additions. I didn't over nitric it, so I haven't had to uh, denox it. Now this has been sitting here for a couple of days because uh, well, we had the 4th of July yesterday and we had a big party here and I've been doing the hurricane prep. The hurricane, well it's going to be a tropical storm now, is coming in the day after tomorrow. So this has been sitting here for a little while, a couple days. And we got a raft of really shiny crystals floating on the surface. I kind of doubt that's going to show up on the camera. I really hope that's not gold coming out of solution again. But uh, there's not much there. So if it is gold, well, hopefully it's not too much gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum filter this and get rid of it because there's still a lot of sludge in the bottom. Um, some of the metastatic acid, uh, there's, there's paint chips, there's bits of plastic, and who knows what else is down there. And this stuff is really, really dark and opaque. So what I'm also think I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it some. Uh, just to make sure that I get anything in here that wants to come out of solution to go ahead and come out. Uh, I don't think there's any silver in here. I tested the, the liquid I got when I dissolved the metal in nitric acid for silver and there was no silver present, but there might be other stuff in here that might want to come out of solution uh, if I dilute it some. I'll probably put some shaved ice in here and just let that melt, cool the liquid down and dilute it, and then anything that really wants to come out of solution will come out of solution before I filter it, and then we'll get a nice clean filtrate, well, as clean as we can get with this coffee colored stuff anyway. And then we'll try and drop the gold out. So let me get uh, let me get some ice in it, and then get set up for filtration. So here's a here's a quick look at those really shiny crystals floating on the surface. I don't know. I'm really starting to worry that that stuff might be gold. But I will catch it on the filter when I filter this stuff. And the filters I always save for uh, you know later refining. So if there is a little bit of gold coming out of solution there. It'll be stuck on the filter, and the filter will get refined in the future, and I'll recover that gold. Back to what I was doing. Time to get the ice in it. Okay, let's get this stuff filtered. My ice has all melted. Uh, got condensation on the outside of it because it's cold now. It's it's diluted. Still got sparkly crystals floating on top. I don't know if gold or not, but it'll get caught on the filter. There's quite a layer of sludge in the bottom. Uh, there's going to be pulp from the paper filters, there's paint chips, there's a little bit of metastatic acid, and there's who knows what else down there. So I'm going to try and pour the bulk of the liquid off first and get it filtered before the sludge goes into the filter and clogs it up. Otherwise, I'm liable to be here all day doing this. Now that I've diluted it, I can see it's, it's a dark green color. It kind of looks brown, like coffee colored, before I diluted it, but it's actually a dark green. I'm thinking ferric chloride. I've been doing a little research, Wikipedia, in organic chemistry. So dissolving, dissolving iron in hydrochloric acid should give you ferrous chloride. But I'm, it took a lot of nitric acid to get this stuff into solution, a whole lot of nitric acid. I'm thinking the nitric acid, a lot of it went into oxidizing the ferrous chloride to ferric. That's a theory anyway, I don't know. Because it kind of looks like ferric chloride solution which I use for various things like stripping the uh, aluminum coatings off of old telescope mirrors before recoating them. So, hard to say. Yeah, this is going to go slow even before the filter gets plugged. There must be some particulates in there that are plugging it up a little already. Alright, let me top it off here. I won't make you watch the whole process. You just come back. When I've got it all filtered, and we'll have a look at what's in the filter, and then we'll drop the gold. 
Okay, I got all of the liquid and most of the crud from the bottom of this beaker in here, and it's slowly filtering through because the filter's plugged up. Uh, the more I look at this, it's 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 kind of looks greenish, but actually it's it's more yellow. It's a very very dark yellow, which leads me to believe yes, it's ferrous ferric ferric chloride. Not that that really matters much. Hopefully, I can drop the gold out of it without too much issue. And then here in the bottom of the beaker. The last thing that was in there, there was some very, very fine gold powder. So the gold was starting to come out of solution, maybe due to evaporation while I was sitting, it, letting it sit here for a couple days, doing other stuff. So there's probably some gold powder up in here too. I'm sure it's not all left in the bottom here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to capture this on another filter. I'm just going to, I'll get a beaker to put underneath this funnel. And I'll capture this gold in that filter just so I don't lose it. And uh, the next time I process gold, I'll throw that filter in and uh, get that gold dissolved and cleaned up. So I've got to wash all the color out of this mess in this filter and uh, get all the gold down here into the beaker. And then we'll be able to be ready to drop it. Boy, this is turning into an epic process. These pins, like I said earlier, I think, there's no free lunch. This is a lot of work. Alrighty, I have transferred the filtered liquid back into this beaker after cleaning the beaker. Um, I've got, I don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not, but I've got that little bit of fine gold powder that was in the bottom of the beaker captured on this filter, so I'll just set that aside. Actually, the liquid that went through the filter, I'm going to add to this. This probably has a little bit of gold in it, I would imagine. That in there. And I'm going to put this in the fume hood and get some SMB on it, and we'll see what kind of a gold drop we get. I hope it's going to be an easy, drama-free gold drop. It, it, I suspect it should be because the gold was coming out of solution on its own and floating on the surface as a raft of crystals, so it obviously wants to come out of solution. So, we'll hope it'll be a nice, easy, clean gold drop. But, you know, as my father used to say, hope in one hand and bleep in the other and see which one fills up quicker. Dad was not exactly an eternal optimist, but uh, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm hoping something goes easy with this process. So, let me get set up in the fume hood and we will drop the gold. Okay, we're set up. We're ready to drop the gold. Got some SMB here.
once it starts foaming, that means that the excess sulfur dioxide is coming out of solution. It's not going into dropping gold anymore, but I'll put a little extra in. something accumulating already. That would be beautiful. Okay, we'll see what we get. Well, it's been a couple of hours and there is a thick layer of gold on the bottom of this beaker. That, that foil on those pins was probably the thickest layer of gold plating I've ever seen on anything. Those foils were thick, so there's there's a fair amount of gold in the bottom of that beaker. Now, it's only been a couple hours, like I said. Normally, I would let this stuff sit overnight, but uh, I think it's probably all settled to the bottom. It started immediately settling, so I think it came out pretty good. Plus, we got some heavy weather coming in for the next couple of days. Um, Hurricane Etta, now a tropical storm, is coming in, so the next couple of days are going to be ugly. So I would like to get this project done. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon off the bulk of the liquid and then start washing the gold in the bottom of the beaker and see if I can get it cleaned up enough and dried out enough to get a weight on it before I have to start breaking down my lab here before the storm gets here. So let me get moving on that. Okay, here we go. Let's get this stuff siphoned. Looks like there's a fair amount of gold in the bottom of that beaker. At least I hope there is. This is a lot of work so far. Nice to get a little payback. Ooh, that still stinks of uh, sulfur dioxide. As soon as I uh, moved the watch glass off the top of it, got a whiff. So I am uh, siphoning this into this old pitcher here. This is I, I siphon all of my uh, liquids after gold dropping into this pitcher, and I just let it sit and accumulate. And a lot of times, a lot more gold will settle out to the bottom of this pitcher, and I'll recover it eventually. The liquid will go into my stock pot, and whatever gold powder is accumulated in the bottom of the pitcher, I will uh, recover. Anyway, you don't have to watch this whole thing. I will be back once it's done. Well, here's a gold. I've transferred it to a smaller beaker as I'm cleaning it. I'm giving it a series of distilled water washes just to get the, uh, the yellow-green crud out of it. Getting pretty clean. Uh, once I dry it out, I'll weigh it up and we'll see what we've got. Uh, I have to say, it's not a hugely impressive looking pile of gold down the bottom of that beaker but uh, won't know until we get it on the scale alrighty I got the gold here it's cleaned and dried I mean it's cleanish let's put it that way I always refine my gold at least three times before I melt it down so I'll just add it to my uh, little container of dirty gold here and uh, once this builds up a little bit, I will go ahead and uh, refine it a couple more times. I find it's more efficient in time and chemicals to do it in larger batches. So I'll wait. Wow, 3.3 grams. That is a little more than I was expecting. Is that showing up? Yeah, 3.3 grams. That is a little bit more than I was expecting. That did not look like that much gold in the bottom of that little beaker. So, okay, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not a great payday considering the amount of uh, effort and chemicals that went into this. These pins, I think, would have been a better candidate for uh, reverse electrolysis or reverse electroplating treatment to get the gold off of them than dissolving all that base metal and then trying to get the gold out. So, uh, 
that's that's a possibility. I haven't got into that, but I may have to in the future. That's bouncing around a little bit because it's kind of windy out here. But uh, we'll go with 3.3. That sounds like a pretty good number. Of course, the pins were free, so I shouldn't complain too much about getting, you know, 3.3 grams of free-ish gold. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, informative, entertaining, whatnot. Give the video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Subscribe to see future videos and press that little bell icon that uh, YouTube makes you press to see future videos or be informed when future videos come out. And thanks once again for watching. Have a good day. Bye.